Hello everyone and welcome to an opening video on what I believe to be the best anti-London setup, that being after pawn d4, pawn to d5, and bishop to f4 the London, you will not be playing slow and passive moves, but instead pawn to c5, the Steinitez counter gambit. The good thing about this is that it is both objectively and practically the best option for you. Uh, you can play it against both this accelerated London system right here, as well as the traditional London with knight to f3, knight to f6 first. Here you also play pawn to c5, and white, if they're not being careful, can get blown off the board extremely fast. So let's get started. So. The first thing you need to know about the London to beat it is that it is a system type opening, meaning that their first five or so moves that they can play can be played in virtually any order. So that is a bit of a tricky thing here, but after pawn to c5, what you are doing is you are immediately pressuring white. You're opening up your queen to come to b6 in the future and attack the weak b2 pawn, as well as immediately attacking their d pawn. So most people here go pawn to e3, uh, defend the pawn like this, but once again, it is a system type opening, so they can also play uh, pawn c3 or knight to f3 here, or even knight to c3, the Jobava London, but pawn to e3 is the uh, most common here. At which point, you want to develop your knight to c6. There is one thing, this is technically a gambit, however, they cannot really capture because it's just bad for them. You simply want to develop your knight to c6, immediately go for a e5 pawn push, and chances are this pawn will immediately be taken back by our bishop. So something like knight to f3 here, preventing the push, you develop your other knight, knight to f6, pawn to e3, now pawn to e6 here, attacking the pawn and they actually just cannot defend it, so after like bishop to b5 and bishop captures c5, you already have a small advantage here and white's London system is immediately crumbling. So they cannot really accept the pawn, but after pawn to e3 here, you now go knight to c6 pressure their d pawn even more and most of the time they will play pawn c3 here they do have one very tricky line which is knight to c3 the jobava london and this is very tricky because if you simply go knight to f6 here which is extremely typical then now knight to b5 they're getting into c7 and you're actually just losing here and i will admit i have had a few embarrassing games like this instead after knight to c3 you simply go pawn to a6 the best move, just prevent the knight from ever coming to b5, and the knight on c3 here is seriously misplaced because a pawn in c3 is much better and more typical in these London systems. So that's what to do against knight c3, but most people here go pawn c3, and now you develop your other knight. Knight to f6 here, uh, there's not too much to talk about here. Uh, their most common move is knight to f3, which goes into the main line position. This is the most popular move and what you will face most of the time. However, they do have one other line here, which is an immediate knight to d2. And this is a little more subpar because what you do here is now go bishop to f5. You control these light squares in white's position. And because they've developed their knight to d2 first, now they can no longer play bishop to d3. So after something like knight to f3 here, you now go pawn to e6. Defend the pawn with your bishop. Now like bishop to b5, you now go queen to b6. Very typical move in these positions to both defend your knight, and in this case attack the bishop, but also pressure the b2 pawn. And after something like queen a4, you simply go rook to c8 here. They have absolutely no threats on your knight, and they can try like knight e5, but they really just have nothing here after like bishop to e7, castles castles, you have a perfectly fine and good position. White has lost all of their advantage, and if anyone is fighting for an advantage, it is going to be you. So that is what to do against knight to d2, but now knight to f3 here is the main line, and this is where you start having a lot of fun in these positions. You play queen to b6. What you are doing with this move is you are immediately attacking white's b2 pawn, which is probably one of white's biggest weaknesses in these positions because their bishop comes out so early. This pawn is always a kind of a weak pawn. So 
their best move here is to go queen to b3 and i'll look more at this in just a moment but they also have two other little sidelines here the first one is queen to c2 defending the pawn like this and in this case you would love to play bishop to f5 and attack the queen so because of that very logically speaking we go pawn to g6 prepare the bishop to come to f5 and you just have a fine position here after something like knight to d2 now bishop to f5 here you follow the plan they cannot go bishop to d3 and try to prevent that because then simply pawn c4 here bishop has to back up and now you successfully get bishop to f5 and white's light squares are just getting absolutely mauled here so that is not very good for them instead after knight to d2 now bishop to f5 here attack the queen if they go bishop to d3 then you simply just trade and play bishop to g7 you have a decent position here where once again it's pretty much even white has lost all of their advantage their best line here to try and keep their advantage is to capture on c5 here attack our queen obviously we have to capture back and now they move their queen to b3 attack this pawn which is also kind of a weakness for us and you have a few lines here but when i was looking the best line it seems for us to play practically is knight to a5 attack the queen as well as defend the pawn and now most likely white is going to go into an end game here with queen to b5 check checking her king as well as attacking our queen so we trade now we drop our knight back to block the check and after another trade here white does have a small advantage here but you have a pretty straightforward plan your bishop will go to g7 your other knight will drop back to c6 and because white has traded off their light square bishop white's light squares are just an absolute mess right now and if they do not deal with it fast they're probably going to get crushed so you still have good chances in the queen to c2 line they also have one other line which isn't as good and that is pawn to b3 here just preventing our queen from ever seeing it but it's just not very good because now we trade on d4 they capture back and after bishop to f5 i mean their position is just kind of subpar after something like bishop to d3 we trade now pawn to e6 we just have a very straightforward and easy going game here after something like knight to d2 bishop e7 castles castles your rook will come to c8 here and try to attack this very weak c pawn which is the biggest disadvantage of moving b pawn so early you also have ideas of going a5 a4 to once again try and pick at this weak pawn so pawn to b3 is not very good but now let's look at the main line which is queen to b3 here this move offers a trade of queens and you do not want to capture their queen since then even though we double their pawns uh the rook now opens up and this is just not very good for us instead what you want to do here is actually play pawn to c4 attack their queen and white's best option here is in fact to trade and i will go more in depth into this because this is the very critical main line but a lot of people here also will play queen back to c2 and if they play this then you have a very nice bishop to f5 and no it's not hang a piece because if they capture then now you take on b2 and the rook in the corner is actually just trapped there is one small thing you need to watch out for here and that is after bishop to e2 you do not capture the rook immediately because then queen back to c2 here and our queen's actually just stuck here and we are not winning anymore instead what you want to do is play pawn to e6 first attack the queen it has to back up and now you take the rook and you're just completely winning here so because of that they cannot capture our bishop instead they have to drop back to c1 which is just super ugly to keep the b2 pawn uh held but i think you can plainly see this is just not very good for them after like pawn to e6 you follow that same plan that you see in most of the lines you go bishop to e7 here uh you castle and in the specific line you have a very nice queen to a6 what you're doing here is you're now moving out of the way of your b pawn to eventually go b5 reinforce this even more maybe even go pawn to b4 in the future and you have a very good position here even according to the engine but if anyone is fighting for an advantage it is definitely you 
So, queen c2 is not a very good line. There is one thing I want to mention, and that is with this bishop to f5 move. The reason you cannot play it in the other line uh, back here, the reason you can't play it um, when they play queen c2 here, is that after bishop to f5, uh, they can actually just capture on c5 here. Attack our queen, and if we capture, then now this actually is just a free bishop. And so because of that, it does not work in this position. So that's just one thing to keep in mind and to not accidentally uh, blunder. But back here, after pawn to c4 push, you now know what to do if they drop back to c2. However, the critical main line here is to capture our queen. We now capture back, and even though we have these doubled b pawns, our rook opens up, and you will see we actually have just enough compensation to make it worth it. White's main move here, or I should say most common move, but it is not their best move, and that is to go knight to d2 here, develop their knight. However, this is not really fighting against us, and here we get everything we want after pawn to b5. And what we're doing here is we're going to push this pawn up to b4, potentially trade it, and then start pushing the other b pawn. And white's extremely weak king side, or sorry, queen side, is actually just not going to be able to handle it. And in this specific line, after like bishop to e2, now you play pawn to b4 here. If they capture, then now you take back with the knight. Now you're threatening a fork here, you're threatening this pawn, and more than likely, you are actually going to be dropping this knight back to c6 to then be pushing the other b pawn up to where the other one once was, up to b5 and b4. If they don't trade, then what you're going to do is simply, uh, like after the castle, you go bishop to f5. You dominate the light squares and control the b1 spot from white's rooks ever getting there, and after like knight e5, uh, they attack your knight, but it's not scary. You simply go pawn to e6. Now your bishop reinforces the b pawn. Uh, I mean, if they trade, you just take back, and you have a very good position here. Only slightly better according to the engine, but you are definitely fighting for an advantage here. Definitely way more than white is. So, very good position if they end up playing knight to d2. Their best try here is probably knight to a3 instead. What they're doing here is they're preventing the immediate pawn to b5 push with their knight, and if we're not careful, their knight is going to drop in to b5 and then get to c7, and we know in the Jabava line, like I showed you earlier, that that can get pretty bad pretty fast. But here you have a maybe slightly surprising move, bishop to f5. And this move controls these light squares, uh, developing to its best square, but it doesn't do anything about knight to b5. And what you're going to do here about this fork is actually just move your rook up to a5 here. You attack the knight, and if they give this check, this is not doing them any favors. We simply run our king to d7. Now this knight is kind of stuck in no man's land, and if anything, our king on d7 is actually a good thing, because first off, they cannot attack it, but secondly, we don't have to waste a move castling to get our other rook into the game. Knight c7 check is not a very good move. Instead, what is better is to go pawn a4, defend their knight like this, and if they do this, then now you play pawn to e6. Uh, my cat has walked into the room. You're going to go bishop to e7 here, you're going to castle, and your other rook will come to help this rook attack this a pawn here. And that can look something like bishop to e2 here, now bishop to e7, castles, castles, and if they try bishop to c7 here, uh, attack this pawn, then you actually just do not defend it, instead you bring the other rook to a8. Now you're attacking this a pawn, uh, and it's actually really hard for them to defend it, because if they try like bishop to d1, then now you have a very nice rook takes on b5, and you are not completely winning here, but you are definitely borderline winning here with a much better position. Now my cat has left the room, and there's one more thing that I want to show you, and that is if they ever try pawn to a3 here to prevent uh, pawn to b4 and pawn to b5, or sorry, b5 and b4, I'm getting confused, it actually just does not work, because always remember, you have this pin on their rook as well. So if after like pawn to b5 and knight to d2, you just play pawn to b4 anyways. 
I mean, captures, captures, now your knight gets in. Uh, obviously, they cannot capture because then they lose a rook. And after something like rook to c1, now you drop the knight back. And we saw this idea. Now your other pawn will be coming up to replace that pawn. And once again, you have a very good position here, only slightly better according to the engine. However, you have many winning chances. All right, so that is what I believe to be the best anti-London setup. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And I will see you next time. Have a fantastic day.